Welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I'm Richard Dubin, your host, and it is really a pleasure to uh, have you here on the program. Joining us, uh, if you're um, listening to the program uh, on the, the internet uh, through uh, richarddugan.com, the link there, or if you are listening to the podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and all the other locations, or maybe you're watching the interview on YouTube. Thank you for, for doing so. I hope you'll uh, not- click the notification and or subscribe. As I've said before, the numbers are not relevant to me. It's just we want to make sure we get that information out to you. And today, oh my God, we're going to have a great time. Uh, I have met this woman uh, through, uh, uh, I, I, she is, we had a conversation where we just kind of clicked on all of these different uh, categories, specifically uh, being Reiki masters. Although we're going to talk about something a little different today. It's uh, Reiki, but it's a different kind of Reiki. We'll find out what that is with our very special guest. And uh, her name, uh, I almost said the name of the Reiki, uh, Kalikai Reiki. Uh, that's not her name. Uh, Raja Shrima, I believe that's correct. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Richard. I'm delighted to be here. And it's Kali Ki Reiki. Kali Ki, Kali, yeah. not Kali Kai. I think that's a, a smaller island off of the Hawaiians. Yeah, uh, Kali Ki. <laughs> but, but the key is like the key of Reiki, right? Yeah. And you know? sort of like the chi of Chinese, uh, the Chinese, uh, no, I'm sorry, Japanese chi. I guess maybe it's both Japanese or Chinese. Well, Ch- uh, you know, Chinese is chi and is Japanese is key. Key. I see. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Makes sense. That's the life force, the energy and so forth. Exactly. And yeah. we're going to talk about that, but a whole lot of other things, including the wisdom school. God, I love that because I'm always referring to the ancient wisdom teachings, which include, uh, you can include whatever you want, folks. Uh, it could be the Quran, the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, for me, as a Baha'i back in the 90s, uh, mm-hmm. the writings of Baha'u'llah, uh, and and so on and so on and so on. I think one of my favorites of his was, uh, if you accept the messenger, uh, one messenger, you accept them all. If you reject one of the messengers of God, you reject them all. And I just, I love that uh, because the message is the same from all of them. The core, I mean, the real, the real heart of the message that they are sending. Let's talk a little bit, first of all, uh, about uh, if I if I if we may about your name, uh, and uh, of course um, as as we have talked, I mean you and I have had a, a great conversations, or a great conversation I should say. Um, back uh, a, a few weeks back, as we were setting up this interview, and and you were sharing with me all of these different names that you derivations thereof, uh, Kalisara, and of course Raja Shrima. Uh, but uh, I would take it that your your given at birth name uh, was uh, uh, Joan uh, Dietrich. 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 It's a, Dietrich. It like Dietrich, but it's pronounced Dietrich. And um, so, actually, thank my new book. Thank you. That you know, then the main author name is Joni J O N I Dietrich, PhD. Mm-hmm. And so that's the name I went through through most of my adulthood. Yeah, yeah I was given that- the name Joan. And it's too bad I can't have James Earl Jones say this. May the life, love force be with you. Kali Ki Reiki, healing through divine mother and yogic wisdom. Uh, long title. That's no kidding, long title. So but, we call it May the Love Force Be With You. Yeah, May the Love Force Be With You. And uh, also, folks, uh, so that we can uh, get off on the, not just the right foot, but also so that you folks can get off on the, on the right foot, so to speak, the wisdom school.us. That's her website, which we will be linked to. We're going to talk about the wisdom school as well as may the love force be with you. And uh, we'll talk about the differences between the Reiki that I learned and am a, a Reiki master thereof uh, from Japan specifically. And I guess I, I want to say not the necessarily the creator, but uh, more the discoverer, because I find that a lot of these different healing modalities, uh, 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 Raja Shrima, are are not things that we actually we as individuals as humans create. It's more like we're given this this great information 
uh, by the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes we're fortunate enough to receive downloads, you know, as many people call it. And that's actually, Richard, how Kaliki Reiki developed. I was already an Asui Reiki master. I was a practicing clinical psychologist and I was a deep meditator. And I had just gotten my um, one of my masters in, in Reiki and started doing a deep meditation practice with a teacher and suddenly I started having these encounters with what who I refer to as Kali Ma, one of the aspects of the Divine Feminine, of the Divine Mother. And she started revealing to me these gorgeous symbols, these forms of light. And, um, you know, at first I didn't quite understand what they were for, what they were about, but she made it very clear after a while that these were new symbols to be used in, in Reiki healing. And of course, as you know, as a Reiki master, um, the energy of Reiki is transmitted through certain symbols. And those symbols are beautiful in that they um, they both offer the ability to become the channel of what I call the love force energy. So I don't call it life force anymore. I call it love force because to me, everything, Richard, is love. And that's the, that's the essence of, of it all. And so these symbols are a way of transmitting or channeling the energy of the divine feminine, the divine. And we can do that and when we transmit that energy when we offer reiki healing to someone we're not giving them our energy so they're not getting our stuff we're not receiving we're not taking in there's not a backwash so to speak right. of their negative stuff it gets released and simply by offering this energy to them what what we're actually doing is allowing that which is already within them the reiki energy within them to reboot you know recharge um to come alive again and that then creates the balance and harmony that that we all seek and that helps us to uh, align physically emotionally and mentally and as you and i discussed um, <clears throat> and maybe this is with <clears throat> the Kali Ki Reiki, not so much uh, the, the Reiki that I learned. Mm -hmm. The energy, uh, we first of all, we act as a conduit of the yeah. energy. Yeah. And then we direct it towards an individual or, and, and I loved this aspect, towards a situation. Yes. But that as I learned it, we would send this energy for the individual to use as they see fit. And I told you the story about my father's uncle, my father's uncle, my father's brother, yeah. who was uh, had terminal cancer. So my wife and I, we sent him an absentee healing. Uh, after uh, my uh, uncle's uh, funeral, my uh, mother shared with us what happened following that absentee healing. And we were taught that the individual uses the energy, which he did in this respect to um, uh, basically get a little upset about all the medications he was taking. And then he had some closing, a closure, a period of closure with his son before he passed. But you described it probably even more accurately. And again, I don't know if this is with the version of Reiki that I learned or with the Kali Ki. It isn't the individual that chooses how to use the energy, but it's the divine it's the universe as i like to say is which which of those is is uh is it part of the the, uh, the <laughs> reiki 1.0 uh, point, uh point one oh, i should say as opposed to 2.0 you know i i actually think that all reiki works this way and and it works this way in that yes we can have an individual intention for our healing but you know the divine is wiser than we are so when you sent that energy to to your uncle um you know what your what your what happened for your uncle i would say is exactly what needed to happen and it was beyond whatever intention you might have had for him and it was beyond really whatever intention he might have had mm -hmm. that doesn't mean we shouldn't have intentions 
you know, um, we, we do have our intentions, but, but I think we have to trust that there's, there's a, a broader intelligence at work and that that's the intelligence of the divine, of the universe, however you want to call it. I call it the divine mother. But, but that's, the, that's the intelligence. And so Reiki, Reiki is just simply activating that. And in Kali Ki Reiki, we talk about intention. Yes, it's important. We also talk about things like when when I send you Reiki, right? That language that we that's the language that we use. We don't really have a better language, mm -hmm. but really, I'm not sending you anything. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't right. come from the ego self, right? And and actually, sometimes if we have specific intentions for our clients, we, we get in the way of of the Reiki. Mm -hmm. So it, it's yeah, it's for it's for the highest, always for the highest good for the person, which is often beyond our ability to know. Mm. And at the same time, you know, sometimes some miraculous healings take place. Right. And, and it's it's wonderful, but it's not because I use this specific technique and I can do it better than someone else. It's not it's not a it's not about that right at all. Absolutely. It's really about how clear and pure of a channel we are. We are talking about Kali Ki Reiki. We are talking with Raja Shrima. And we are going to talk more about uh, this uh, very unique uh, form of Reiki, as well as um, we're going to get an education by going to The Wisdom School. TheWisdomSchool.us is the website. I'm Richard Dugan, and this is Tell Me Your Story. We are so grateful to have with us here on the three months. We're talking about... Uh, Kali Ki Reiki, we're talking about the wisdom schools. And, and I'm not hearing. Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you, but you're cutting out a little bit. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Second, please. Stuck on it. What is going on? Hang on. Your default microphone has changed to microphone. What are you talking about? Yeah. All right, let's do this again. We'll pick it up from the break. We'll pick it up from the break. In three, two, one. It's really a pleasure to have Raja Shrima with us here on the program to talk about uh, Kali Ki Reiki as well as uh, her wisdom school. And the wisdomschool.us is her website. Uh, I do have to ask you, and the, only those who are watching the YouTube video are going to know what in the Sam Hill I'm talking about here. Um, what is that quote, if you will, on the wall behind you? Yes. yes. Yes, it, it, isn't that, isn't it gorgeous? It was a gift it's, to me. It's a it, beautiful wall hanging, but what what does it? <laughs> it's it's, what it says? it's Sanskrit, and it is the Heart Sutra. Ah. So I cannot read all the lettering, but but the basics of the of the Heart Sutra um, is the I think a famous um, saying that emptiness is form, and form is emptiness. Wow. Huh. I, 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 I find that interesting, especially if I think of the Buddha and his experience, as usually with most of us, when we're looking for something. And the moment we stop looking, we find it. But then we start looking again and we lose it. <laughs> exactly. And that's kind of what this is saying, you know, that uh, um, and, and, and I think about that, especially in terms of both my eldest sister and my father who have passed and how, okay, they were in the body. And I, I, I say this, you know, with actually some great joy and not sadness. <gasps> now they're everywhere. They're everywhere, you know, and I can talk to them and I may not have the same kind of conversation that I had with them uh, back uh, when they were in the body. But, over the years, we've had many conversations, um, Raja Shrima, about death and dying. Now, mm -hmm. I kind of like the word transitioning, 
but I had my comeuppance with Bernie Siegel on this program where mm-hmm. uh, he was sharing his his uh, the experience with his wife and her passing, her dying. And he used the word dying. She died. And I'm talking. I said, so when your wife transitioned and that and I and he stopped me, he said, what do you mean? She died. What's wrong with using the word die? And so with respect to Bernie Siegel <laughs> and I, I, I love the man. He's just wonderful. Um, but. That seems to be a real bugaboo for a lot of people. I mean, I think about um, the memorials that I've been to of other people, including my sister. Uh, and I have to say it was one of the greatest balances of laughter and tears. Oh, I was I have to tell you, when I left, I I actually felt uh, sort of rejuvenated uh, and energized to it to a to a point. Um can this energy that I'm going to put it in this context, we tap into, okay, because we don't we don't generate it, that we tap into, uh, can we send that in the context of helping people not to work through their grief? That's that I, I want to let them do that on their own, but maybe to give them to um to better um, understand what it is that they have just experienced. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a it's a beautiful question, and and it, I mean it's a beautiful contemplation, really, Richard. And um, you know when you talk about being at a memorial and there are the tears and there are the laughter and all of that. And you know what underlies that? Love. Mm-hmm. The love that's present. And of course, what we know is love doesn't die. Love mm-hmm. is ever present. And when we're alive and we get caught up in our in our arguments and our quarrels and all of that, we forget it sometimes, right? Um, but Often, I think this is the beauty of memorial services and or celebrations of life um, is that it's like it's the whole enchilada. Mm -hmm. It's it's the laughter. It's the talking about the crazy times. It's talking about the lovely times. But it's it's not the what we're talking about. It's not the content. It's people coming together in love. And it's not just love for the person who's passed, right? It's love for one another. And it's just that understanding that love is the basics of it all. And love is the force, the energy of Reiki healing. Mm. So anytime we activate Reiki, we're activating that universal cosmic love force. Mm -hmm. And that's what heals. Mm. And I think, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Now, you use the word heals, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, I've already shared with you what happened with my with my uncle. So, and, and by the way, when I found out about this, and when I started doing interviews in regards to all of this, um, I then put forth the question to people when they talk about their various forms, their various modalities of healing. Now, understand, I also worked for 15 years for a Christian radio station, and we would have these prayer, live prayer programs. People would call in and and ask people to pray for their healing for this, that, or the other thing. First of all, one of the things I noticed over the years, the same people were calling over and over again. And what I realized was, though they may be in need of some form of healing for a particular condition, they were looking for connection Mm. more than healing. That's really what they were looking for. But if you take the example, for example, of uh, my uncle, he wasn't healed. He died. I mean, if you look at it on the superficial level, he died. It didn't work. It didn't cure the cancer. So I have a feeling that we need to maybe redefine the word healing or use a different word to describe um, what it is that we should expect when we send the energy. And, and when I say that, I'm not talking about having 
uh, uh, unrealistic expectations. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, no, I think that's it's a very, very important concept, and it is one I talk about in in my book. Like, what is healing, right? And especially when we're talking about energy healing. Mm-hmm. So, so first of all, the word heal is connected to the word health, which is actually has its, its root in a word that means wholeness. So the way that I look at this is, you know, when we can offer Reiki to someone like your uncle, who that may not heal or cure. There's mm-hmm. a difference between healing and curing. And I think that's what we need to look at. It's not going to cure a cancer necessarily, mm-hmm. although, you know, there have been the very rare miracles where yes this will happen but it's not going to cure the cancer but what it will do is given the state of of his body mind and soul it will bring things more into a sense of integrity or wholeness or harmony within so that perhaps the healing is simply accepting that yes this physical entity is dying the form is dying right Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that the 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 being or the essence or the soul is dying so when we can have that kind of harmony or wholeness even if we're in pain etc and then and then for your uncle to have this insight you know what i'm done with these medicines Mm -hmm. that was huge yeah so that to me is a healing to to mm-hmm. know that it's like okay they're all telling me to do this and that and i've been doing it but now i'm going to do this my way yeah i also have a feeling too that and i i when i say this i speak of my mother specifically uh that women in particular because they are the nurturers not to say that men can't be and i like to think that that i've i've been doing that for quite a while in in certain situations they're they're tapping into that energy just naturally because of the way that they they nurture especially their children their spouses other people when they the other people are hurting are in discomfort and or dis-ease and it's like they have this innate uh, uh way and the other aspect of this energy is that you it, it never disappears you can't destroy it it only changes form yes exactly and we can call it love too and yes yeah and 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 it's the love that it is is not necessarily like relational love like right, the love. Right. It, it's just pure essence of being and the, when we can see love in that way then we don't put demands on it but but that's to get back to what what you were saying about women having this kind of natural capacity mm-hmm. Um, that's partly why I'm focusing on the divine feminine. I think that the world needs more of that feminine mother energy. But I'll tell you, Richard, when I am guiding people through Reiki healing, when I'm guiding people through opening the chakras, I guide men to open up their womb <laughs> as much as I invite women to do that, which, you know, can sound crazy, but we're not talking about something physical. We're talking about that nurturing, loving, all accepting capacity within each of us. And someone just a little while ago was telling me how his father felt like he was never, never there or was not as much of a nurturer as as his mother but (laughs) but you know richard that's i think what happens to men is Mm -hmm. they think well because i've been busy providing and doing and and all of that i haven't been there and yet if they've been doing all that in love they're opening their own heart womb if you will Mm -hmm. and of course you know i'm not talking about something on a physical level no 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 yeah you know, I went to I went to see uh, an intuitive not long ago. Now, when I go, it's more for confirmation, and sometimes for I just want to listen to somebody else talk about this stuff so that I can just kind of take it in because I'm just I'm exhausted. And quite honestly, there is a certain element <laughs> of exhaustion that I'm I'm feeling uh, dealing with, of course, 
um, eleven months ago. Uh, actually, uh, the as our as of our conversation, my sister uh, passed uh, this particular month, the month of March, uh, and then my father waited until the first of March to depart, which I found rather rather interesting. It's like ah, the month of March for them must have been the portal. Must have been the portal. Not to mention, he was born in 1931, and he passed on 3-1. Uh, once again, interesting synchronicity. I have no idea. Maybe it means nothing, you know. <clears throat> Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, it's just it's just really interesting to... Um, to tap into this. And of course, with dealing with this subject for so many years myself, uh, I always say it's a, it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart, even though I had not experienced a lot of, I mean, I haven't had a near death or out of body experience, but I've had a few people and animals. Oh my goodness. The number of animals that have passed. So I have, uh, I have that particular element in my life uh, that this, it, but it just interests me. It's uh, uh, basically what I say is uh that uh, I wonder what that person's doing. What are they? What are they experiencing? And then I had the opportunity of going through life between lives, and really kind of connecting, at least from my mm -hmm. vantage point, my perspective. This is where this is what what uh, I went through. It was really fascinating. We are talking with Raja Shrima, and we're talking about uh, her latest work. May the love force be with you. We're going to talk more about. Kaliki Reiki, as well as uh, healing through divine mother and uh, yogic wisdom. Uh, I believe uh, in the in the Hindu tradition, it is uh, Shakti. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as we continue here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, and I thank you for staying with us here on the program as we talk with uh, Raja Shrima and uh, her work, the work she's doing, May the Love Force Be With You is the book, and thewisdomschool.org. Uh, that US, that I'm US. A, I, I, you know, I saw it, I'm looking at it, and it's like, it just comes out. I could have said .com, it would have been the same, it just comes out. U.S. Yeah. folks, that's the wisdom, the wisdom school dot U.S. You got to get that right. We'll be linked, as as I've said before, uh, to your website. Tell us a little bit about this school. First of all, um, why did you start this school? Because that is, quite honestly, it is a monumental endeavor. Mm -hmm. OK, well, can I first respond to what you said just a little while ago? Oh, sure, sure. No, first of all, my mother passed on my father's birthday. My father had died 15, 10 years previously. And, you know, those kind of coincidences that, you know, they just feel like so much more than than that. It, it was like she was just returning to him on his birthday. And that was his birthday gift, you know, yeah. from wherever, wherever he was at. So when you were talking about those synchronicities of, of dates, I think, I think they're important to note and um and you know reiki is amazing when you're working with people who are in transition who are transitioning and to be able to be present with someone and to be offering some reiki healing to them we believe at the wisdom school which i'm happy to talk about mm -hmm. that that actually allows the soul to pass through a higher portal, a higher chakra, if you will. And it actually eases the transition. And, uh, you know, uh, Richard, I have worked with many souls after they've transitioned as well mm -hmm. to help them to get to the, the, the finest place, mm -hmm. the most subtle, the most beautiful sense of continued being that they can be in. I have guided meditations on, on my website um, for people to experience, you know, it's in the imagination, but mm -hmm. it's very true that for ourselves, our transitioning from this lifetime to the next and even prior, you know, how we came into this this lifetime. So um, I'm, I'm very much with you in in regard to you know it's a continuation and um we can when we go deep in reiki we simply have a direct experience of that and you know we can't prove it scientifically 
but it's just such a it's such a deep knowing and it's such a deep confidence and and blessing to understand that this life force energy this love force that we are is always and um we there's no there's no losing anything mm. and it's yeah. a great comfort when you really begin to practice in this way so and actually that's one of the reasons i started the wisdom school right is to mm -hmm. give as many people as possible the opportunity to experience the depths of being and to understand that when we experience being as formless then it is beyond time it's beyond space and so we really do experience the eternal so at the wisdom school we do this by teaching kali ki reiki we do this by teaching um deep meditation there are many other teachings that that we do and i i want to say something about kali ki reiki that um is not typical necessarily of other reiki training and that is we've got three levels you can do the first level in a weekend you can do the second level in the weekend but to become a kaliki reiki master it's a one-year apprentice program mm. um, that's really quite intense so it involves a big commitment and because we call this mastery right and to me to become a master in a weekend you know it 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 doesn't compute yeah <laughs> you know? yeah well, I know that uh, ours took place over several weekends, primarily, or evenings. I, I'm trying to remember the exact uh, uh, structure thereof. Uh, all I know is that um, uh, it was just, it was fascinating. And of course, at that time, we were told that these symbols were not to be shared. Uh, yes. And then, and I want to say it was just a few years ago, and bear in mind, this was back in the late 90s when I became a Reiki master. But just recently, I see the symbols all over the internet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I don't know whether that's because there's been a change, at least in that form of Reiki that I learned. Uh, what about uh, uh, Kaliki Reiki and the symbols? Are those kept private? Yeah, let, let me let me speak to the first part and then sure, sure. To Kali Ki Reiki. So yes, I was trained that way too, that these these symbols are to be kept secret. And the idea was that if they got out there in the public, they would somehow get diluted, that you know, they would lose their, their potency. But there were people that wanted it out there, and there's the internet, right? Can we keep anything from the internet? And <laughs> and so they're out there galore now and I don't think that they have diluted the potency of the symbols. You can't dilute the potency of the divine is, is, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. you, you can do whatever you want to with it, with your, in your mind, mm -hmm. but, but the symbols themselves are pure. And that includes the Asui symbols, but the Asui symbols came into this world at the turn of the last century. Mm -hmm. Right? They were given to um, a Buddhist monk, Macau Asui, in, in Japan um, through an enlightenment experience that he had, and they're beautiful symbols. These Kaliki Reiki symbols came in at the beginning of this century, and they came, you know, they came to me as, as a woman, and they came from this Divine Mother source. And these symbols of Kaliki Reiki first of all we see them as pure light so they're depicted as white on black white light emerging out of um, the darkness whereas you know in the past symbols were just depicted like you know black lettering on on paper mm -hmm. and so hopefully when people see these symbols they feel the transmission they feel the the power and the energy of the kali ki reiki symbols and these symbols vibrate at a very different frequency than the Asui symbols. So we believe that they came into the world in this century at this time for to serve the consciousness and what is needed in humanity today. And as we know, our world is full of all kinds of conflict. 
and difficulty and mm -hmm. we are on a precipice in in terms of you know will our planet even be able to exist and so i feel like there's there's actually a profound importance in these so these symbols first started coming to me in 2008 the you know this right now is um 2023 mm -hmm. and the book is only just now being published which means the symbols are in the book you will see them in the book and they're beautiful graphic representations it took me a long time and and to really feel very prompted by divine mother to uh, make the decision to print them and publish them in the book. But frankly, I thought nobody's going to really understand what Kaliki Reiki is if I just talk about the symbols rather than people getting to see them. And you can meditate on these symbols just by gazing into them. So I just invite people to, you know, open up and and take them, you know, t take a meditative contemplative stance as as you're working with these symbols. And will they end up all over the internet? Probably, you know, how much can you con control? Um, and yet, I think there is an openness now in our world and our culture in the globalization through the through the net and just through our our connection with beings that there's no reason to keep things secret any longer mm. yeah i i i i my personal i'm gonna say it's my favorite quote but it, it's mine <laughs> oh, i love it <laughs> all right so, yeah and the, the quote is this if you have no secrets to keep you have no secrets to keep. Now, I usually use that phrase when speaking of um, governments. Mm. What do you need a military for? What do you need espionage for? What do you need a CIA and all of these other things that are going on in our country? Vice versa, what do you need the KGB for? Or whatever other agencies of other governments there are. Everybody's spot, and then a corporate as well. Uh, plus the fact that in the Bible, one of those ancient wisdom teachings, it says there is nothing new under the sun. So we're not creating anything new. I don't care how many centuries go by and how advanced we think we are. None of this is new. And quite honestly, for example, the phone, you know, this 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 cell phone. Yeah, it's it's new technology to us as mortals. What is it? It's nothing, nothing more than a a form of communication, which you and I are doing right now. We could be doing it face to face in person, and the transmission of information, the sharing of information, the the uh, gathering of information. We've been doing that for centuries too. So this isn't anything new. It's just a different way of doing it, and we didn't discover it. We didn't. Uh, I should say we didn't create it. We discovered it, but it's nothing new. And and I think that's one of the things that I think is, is especially here in the United States, is a little lost because we seem to be of the attitude, or many do, I, I am not one of those, and I'm sure you're not, who is not, you know, there are many who do not, they're not willing to learn from others outside of the quote unquote tribe, the U.S. tribe. Uh, no, 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 we'll figure it out ourselves. Whereas they've already figured it out. They're doing it great over there in England, in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, wherever. Uh, and um, of course, the, 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 the case is also true, vice versa. Uh, some of these other, like, for example, you hear about the pollution in China. My uh, my brother, for example, used to work for Disney and, and he would be in Beijing. And I mean, it was just horrible to try to breathe as they were building uh, this new Disney uh, amusement park. Well, there are other countries, including the United States, who uh, have cleaned up their air. I mean, look at Los Angeles today versus uh, 30 years ago. Uh, you know, so it's like it, 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 we get this ego thing going where, no, 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 figure that on my own, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the things I found, too, especially when it comes to the male-female relationship. And a lot of guys, especially those in relationships, uh, girlfriends uh, or or wives, for that matter, uh, they won't listen. I listen to my wife. Um, sometimes my ego gets in the way, but I suppress that. Will you let me figure it out on my own? 
you know, because in many instances, I will stop and I will listen to that still small voice saying, if you do it your way, you will hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to her, you'll be fine. I remember I was cutting down a, a dead tree uh, on our property where we live. And I couldn't, I, I moved the ladder around the darn thing eight or 10 times. And then I got to a point I hear from the from the house, why don't you pause and, and come inside? And a matter of fact, I was in tune with her at that time. And I'm going, you know what? This tree doesn't have to come down today. I'm just going to leave the ladder up and I'll come back and do this later. And the next day I came back and I cut it down and it worked out just fine. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we we <laughs> we need to listen to one another. We're listening today, of course, uh, to Rajesh uh, Raja Shri Raja and uh, you are listening, of course, here to tell me your story. I'm Richard Dugan, and we are talking about the Wisdom School, uh, thewisdomschool.us, and. Uh, May the Love Force Be With You. It's the latest book by Raja Shrima, and it's really a pleasure to have you with us here on the program. I, I'm really uh, delighted to, to be able to talk with you about all these different things. Let's talk a little bit about what else one can learn at the Wisdom School. You've all obviously uh, told us that uh, we can become uh, Kaliki Reiki Masters, which is going to take a year plus. Uh, again, if you're, if you're serious then you're going to commit to that. But what else can we learn? Okay. So you can also do the first and or the second level of Kali Ki Reiki. And at the first level, which is a weekend, you learn how to do healing for yourself, right? Which is so essential. And you learn how to offer healing to your friends, your family, your pets, even your plants, if you like. Um, and, and so for many people, that's all they need, you know, is just doing that, that first level. And then the second level takes you a little deeper. And that's where we really present Kali Ki Reiki as, as a path, not just to the healing that we were talking about, right? But a path to, I call it wising. Some people call it awakening or enlightenment, you know, I'm sure you've had you had this experience, Richard. It's like once you experience a healing, like you suddenly feel better because somebody is just lightly placing hands on you or sending some energy over the internet, mm -hmm. and you feel better, and you feel better emotionally, physically, on all levels. It it, it makes you think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes you question, like, wait a minute. You know, I thought the way to get better was I had to take pills. Or at least, you know, I had to have I had to have a surgery or, you know, I even had to have a massage or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when we begin to realize that we can feel better, more whole, more our true nature, simply through an energy exchange, it it changes our whole way of thinking about the world. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us know now because we've taken enough science and physics has told us everything is energy. But we know that intellectually. But when we experience a Reiki healing and we realize that the energy within us has moved around so that the physical body is now acting differently, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a real understanding. It's a direct understanding everything is energy and i am that energy that is what really causes people to wake up and causes people then to start listening for the wisdom wherever they can find it like you were talking about mm -hmm. before you know listening not just to your wife but you know nations listening to nations yeah. and and wisdom traditions, listening to wisdom traditions, like you said at the beginning of the show, every single wisdom tradition at the core is talking about the same thing, right? There's, there's many rivers, but there's one ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish that uh, more of the, um, <laughs> more of the droplets would uh, recognize that <laughs> um, because they're all part of the same ocean. We're all going the same place. Uh, it's all energy and uh, it can be changed. It can be transformed. If you will, you can't dissipate the strength of it. 
you know, you can't mute it or you can't amp it up necessarily. It is what it is. Use it as it is. It's one of the other things, too, I find so fascinating. Um, I learned years ago, early in my career, work with what you have until you get what you want. Mm. Know what you want. We talk about giving people choices and knowledge of those choices to help make their dreams come true. Uh, I have worked at stations, and, and and this is geared more in regards to my career, mm-hmm. where they didn't have such great equipment, but mm-hmm. we still accomplished some amazing things. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that we MacGyvered it, okay? You know, with uh, you know all these different little things. Okay, where's the paper clip and some chewing gum and so forth? Uh, it was okay. This stuff works. So how can we make it work to create what we want? And uh, I've had a few experiences where uh, I discovered a couple of things that later on with the the newer technologies, I'm going, gee, I can do that with this. Gee, I did that over here with, you know, 10 times as much equipment, you know, uh, and and wow, they they codified that down into this little space. That's pretty cool. And, and I'm very proud the fact that uh, I'm not going to say that I was the, a creator of it, but I, I discovered it through a process of uh, working with what I had uh, um, and so forth. And I think that that seems to be the case that we need to learn with with just our lives, you know, where where we are right at this moment. I want to talk to you about that in terms of where we are right at this moment in the now. Uh, we've had a number of interviews, conversations about that, uh, that th- this is really all that matters. Nothing else Outside of this instant, this moment, which is constantly moving, by the way, um, we are, I should say, moving through. And uh, I know that there are authors, there are philosophers and so forth who have talked about this. And I've used the analogy of watching a sound wave being created on my sound editing software. To the left, you see the wave it's created. That is the past. You see the nothingness of of the void, if you will, on the right. That's the future. It's the white line where just before the wave is created, that is the now. But the moment, the instant that that wave is created, it's already the past. Yes. Talk to us about your perspective. Well, I think that was so beautifully expressed, um, Richard. But um, I'll talk about it from a couple aspects. One is that when we become a true Reiki master, we become the Reiki energy. We, and that is being in the present moment. When we are with someone else and we are completely present to them, to their process, when the love force in us is completely connected with the love force in them, then we are in the present moment. And like you said, but I'll elaborate on it a little bit more. The present moment is eternal. We are always in present moment. Our mind projects beyond that, right? Our mind projects back, but our beingness is always present. So a lot of doing Reiki practice is simply coming into present moment and being present for the person that we're working with. That brings them into presence. There's a resonance. So I think that is very important. And then to understand that the the Reiki love force energy is something beyond time and space. And that, for example, is how distant healing works. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if I'm sending you Reiki energy right now, you're going to feel it just as intensely as if you were here in the wisdom school and I was placing my hands on you. Why is that? And that's because the energy of being, of the love force, is omnipresent, always present. And all we need is to have a connection. And then that healing energy is transmitted to you it activates the energy within you but not only do we have the distance of space but we also have the distance of time and this is where some people might do a little eye rolling but um, one of the things that we learn and teach in Kali Ki Reiki is that we can go back actually and heal the past 
we can Ooh. extend healing into the future. Okay, so one of the ways, of course, of healing the past is working with trauma. And, and we have a method for doing that. I call it DROP, Deep Release of Persistent Pain Patterns, a big mouthful. Um, so that, that's one way. You know, any kind of inner child work we do, we're actually going back and we're healing the past. But we do a dialogue. We have the, our past selves dialoguing with our future selves. Sometimes we even do what we call ancestral healings. We're healing ourself in this moment is transmitted back through generations and and then and then it can it can move forward as well mm. and what does this do it helps us in the present moment always so if we heal future if we heal past we're getting a healing in the present moment because the past was just simply a present moment right mm. and as crazy as this might sound there, are, there currently are many studies in quantum physics that will talk about this. That you know, there, is, you know, we can influence the past in the present, and that we can influence the future. Um, so there have been studies uh, in regard to all this. Actually, I think Bernie Siegel has been involved in some of these studies. Um, I may not be right there, but um, so. It, it can sound crazy until we have that experience. So if you can go back and heal a traumatic memory from childhood, that will change how you are in the present. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Makes and if we sense. Yeah. project forward and have a conversation, if you will, with our older, wiser self, we could teach ourselves something about how to be in this present moment. Without getting uh, into the convolu convoluted aspects of uh, this whole uh, past, present, future healing process, um, I have to wonder when we're talking about healing the trauma, we're not talking about changing the past. You can't change the events. Ergo, you don't have to worry about that whole science fiction thing about, well, you can't go in the past and change things because you'll change the future or your present moment and you won't be the person you are and on and on and on. And it's like, that's not what we're talking about. It's, yeah, it's no, and, no, and in trauma healing, um, you know, I had 30 years of, of being a clinical psychologist. So I did um, a lot of psychological technique for, for trauma healing. And and what happens is we don't forget the event, but we no longer have the emotional charge that was associated with the event originally. We can remember it without getting triggered by it. What does that do? Well, it changes everything in our present day life because we don't walk around avoiding triggers, being frightened that we'll run into a similar situation, avoiding relationships because we might get wounded by this person the way we did by our mother or our father or our neighbor or whatever. And so it completely changes our ability to just feel free and, and happy in the present moment. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because there are those who, and I don't know that they necessarily enjoy this, but they they seem like they just don't want to be happy, uh, especially <laughs> when I took take a look at the people on, uh, on, on the TV, especially, uh, who are so invested in current events and uh tribal mentality and all of the and again this is not in any particular institution mind you. this is in all of them uh you know in, in law enforcement you see the different agencies grappling for prominence and dominance and position and so forth and it's like wait a minute all of you people are on the same side there's somebody that is missing and you people are trying to say well we're in charge no 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 we're in charge uh or or complaining yeah. about the problems that exist like when was the last time you were happy and i joke about this as far as economists they're never happy even if the numbers are good they're still not happy because because we all know there are cycles 
and things go up and down. And economists don't seem to understand that, at least at least from the standpoint of being happy. It's like, uh, you know, I don't uh, like when the stock market tanks and drops a thousand or 10,000 points or whatever it is. Right. And I just sit there going, OK, would you do me a favor? Do a little history of research. Go back to the beginnings of the stock market to the present and show me what direction it has flowed. What direction has it gone? Okay. This is a blip in the grand scheme of things. But you know, Richard, I think what, what happens is that we forget that happiness is an inner experience. It's not dependent on the events and the external events. And to really know happiness as an inner experience, we have to go within. We have to feel that energy. This is where meditation and various practices can be so very helpful. Because the external world is always going to be going topsy-turvy. Yeah. yeah. So we've got to go inward and know that that's happiness it's it's with it is truly within each of us if we seek it and if we don't right it's either out of fear or a not a, a not understanding that it's not about our external things what we get what we have how to make the you know run the world my way kind of kind of thing that yeah. understand that that happiness lies within and it is truly based on being connected, you know, with the soul self. Um, otherwise, no matter what, everything's going to always be changing externally. Yeah. And we're going to just be reacting, reacting, reacting. There is a beautiful line uh, that I've quoted many times on this program regarding change from uh, uh, a song by John Denver. And it is... Uh, Changes somehow frighten me. Still, I have to smile. It turns me on to think of growing old. You know, and one of the things, too, is that, you know, we hear this phrase quite often, uh, Raja Shrima. The only constant in the universe is change. It's not even death and taxes. It's change. <laughs> okay, but yes, and that's the only constant in the external universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if we can go deep within we come to that which is changeless, which is ever present and always in existing. So there's the difference, you know, everything out there is all is always in flux, but there is, there is that stable, steady, changeless divinity, whatever you want to call it. And it's right here inside of our soul, each and every one of us. That's what we try to help people at the Wisdom School to experience and to expand on. Yeah. You know, it's it's so interesting. Um, I'd like to think that I have come to terms with this concept of transformation. I've even heard... Uh, Transconfiguration, I think, was the word that was in an, an interview that I did just the other day. They used that word. Uh, but in terms of the, the uh, uh, aspect of trans transforming or dying, leaving the body. Now, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Men in Black, the first one. And they have the alien up on the table and it's this giant thing and they're cracking open the head and inside is this tiny little critter, right? All right. Okay. As a child, I used to think like that was me. I'm, I'm inside the head, looking out the eyes, listening through the ears, speaking through the mouth and so forth and walking around in this machine and that the world was here for me. But everybody else had the same perception. They were these tiny little things inside the bodies and the world was there for, in other words, I was now there for them and so forth. And I heard this great line from, interestingly enough, a protagonist in a movie 
There is no reality. There is only perception. Which then raises the question about, uh, the people love to talk about absolute truth. And this was really funny. I heard a comedian say this. There is no absolute truth. Well, wait a minute. If there's no absolute truth, isn't the fact that there's no absolute truth an absolute truth? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, it's perfect. It's perfect. And that we can play like that with words. It's it's really quite amazing. But you know what? I agree with your little child self. Yeah. That, that there is a soul and essence within me and within you that is being housed by this body, which is our temple, right? And and needs to be taken care of. But we have allowed ourselves to be ruled by the body and its desires and um, our senses and, and all of that, rather than understanding that the body is here to serve the being. And the being is maybe not this little tiny thing. Mm -hmm. right? Maybe it's quite expansive. And maybe ultimately the being inside of you is the being inside of me, that we're all reflections of, of each other or of the one. Mm. And maybe it truly is one being with all these various bodies and personalities and egos and, and, and et cetera. So, you know, to, to really connect with that part of you that you say is me, right? Mm -hmm. This is the me that, that the body is like this machine and, you know, it's an, org it's an org organism for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I think there's a lot of truth in that. And to, you know, to go back to that, really, it's like, okay, I am here. And for this lifetime, you know, for however many years I'm inside of this body and this body is changing and it's degrading and it's also being healthy and all of that. And I want to take care of it, but it's serving me. It's serving really, we should, you know, serving the divine. If we, if we allow that and we don't get carried away by the ego and yeah. the senses ruling us. And this is what's spoken of actually in the Bhagavad Gita, that, um, you know, the, the mind is considered the, um, the, the king of the senses and, you know, that which, which rules us. And it's like, no, there's, there's a greater self within. Mm. Speaking of which, uh, I want to talk about this before we wrap up. Meditation and the mind. When I was learning about it in the late 70s and into the 80s, it was shut the mind down. Just tell it to shut up, go away, you know. Uh, and uh, if, if there are thoughts that come, just let them flow through and just da 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 da, -da. And over the years, I thought, you know, okay, I, I get that. I, you know, because you're trying to focus on that still small voice, that quiet, peaceful place, which by the way, we encourage people to go to uh, during the decade of perfect vision, the 2020s. We want mm -hmm. people to go within. So, uh, and then of course, um, uh, I thought, well, what if you made friends with the mind and said, look, uh, I, I I understand. I don't I don't want you to to uh, uh, to to feel uh, any 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 abandonment here. But I need to take some time, and I need to go in here where it's quiet and peaceful, and and so on and so forth. And when I come back out, we're gonna have some fun with what I learn, with what I pick up. All right. Then I had one of my guests say, "Well, actually, what would be even better, okay, is you say to the mind, come with me." Don't say anything, but come on with me, come with me and, and, and you can see too. And I thought, wouldn't that be a better way to do it, to incorporate the mind in that meditation, as long as the mind will just stay quiet, shh, this is a quiet place. It's like a library. And and, and if you get loud, we're, we're going to have to ask you to leave. By the way, I don't know how many people have had this experience. I have actually been thrown out of a library uh, for being too loud. <laughs> surprise, surprise. What do you think about that in terms of uh, the mind and the, would you say the necessity for meditation? Yeah. Well, well, first of all, we can't throw the mind out just like, you know, we can't take an arm and just pull it off. Right. And the mind is, is part, it's a huge part 
of, of who and what we are as embodied beings. So when we talk about just, you know, turn off the mind, well, we can't. You know, the mind, the mind is there and the brain, you know, it's an organ like, like the, the heart, right? It's always pumping yeah. whether we're thinking about it or not. And the brain is always creating thought, making associations, doing perceptions that that's its job. And so, yes, we bring with us every aspect of our body into that quiet, still place. And, you know, the Bhagavad Gita talks about, um, I'll, I'll use the word mind, sometimes it's small self and big self, but, but um, when the, the, if the mind is an enemy of the self, the true self, we're not going to get anywhere. The mind and the self need to be friends. So it's exactly what you're talking about. And um, so it, it, that's, that's very important. And the, and the mind also, I mean, you know, it serves us. We can't really do without. Um, but we can also find a quiet place where everything is in harmony and the mind isn't louder than the body and it isn't louder than, than that sense of sacred self. Mm. Because so often, you know, our, our mind is just loud, 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 loud. Yeah. But telling it to shut up <laughs> you know, doesn't, doesn't work. That's like telling the oceans not to uh, come in and out, the tides, yeah. or the wind to, to tell the wind not to blow. <laughs> <laughs> to be a little more poetic about it. You're right. You can't, you can't. I mean, the ocean is the tides and the ocean is the waves yeah. and the ocean is the depths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we want to be able to go to the depths. We want to be able to kind of be fluid, right? Between exactly. the depths and the surface. And when we're on the surface, if we can still remember that we're not an individual wave separate from the ocean, right? then we can remember the depths when we're on the surface and that actually is one of the ways of finding true happiness we are talking with Raja Shrima and we're talking about the work that she does and the work that she has done through a book called may the love force be with you uh kali ki reiki healing through divine mother and yogic wisdom and we hope that you'll pick up a copy through her website thewisdomschool.us thewisdomschool.us she's the founder and master teacher kai ki reiki and also founder and master teacher of the wisdom school and you my friends are listening to tell me your story it has been a real pleasure to have uh, Raja Shri Raja Shri Ma here on the program uh, to talk about the work that she is doing. I'm real. I've really uh, enjoyed our conversation and and uh, the direction that it's gone. As I always say to uh, to my guests and listeners, the universe asks the questions. I'm just along for the ride. And uh, sometimes the ride is pretty cool. So, and this one's been pretty cool. And I thank you so much for taking so much time out of your day to to share with us. Thank you so much, Richard. And may the love force be with you and may the love force be with all who are listening. I have three final questions I ask all of my guests. I will ask those of you in just a moment. But first, I want to thank you for listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story. New paradigms for a new world as we give you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. We are here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., Wednesdays at 9 a.m. for the special edition of Tell Me Your Story. And believe it or not, we are on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. And we're also on YouTube where you can watch these interviews. We ask that if you can support us financially, PayPal, it's there for your security as well as ours. They're going to ask you for an email address to whom you will send the support. And it's richard at richarddugan.com. And I'll repeat it. If you, We would really like it if you did participate in the decade of perfect vision, the 2020s. And we ask you to spend that time going within and listening to that still small voice, okay? And 
don't push the mind away. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a little kid just like you and li- wants to belong. So we'll find a way to, to, to make that happen. And we, uh, we hope that you will do that as well with that. We will go to our uh, three questions and uh, I will, I will use uh, the name we've been using throughout the program in this case, who is Raja Shrima? Ah, okay. Well, you know what? I'll give you what the, the name means. So um, Raja Shri, um, Raja is royal, mm-hmm. right? And Shri is like beauty, bountiful, etc. And then the Ma is mother. So this name was actually given to me by my guru. And it basically, it means kind of um, queen mother on the one hand and then on the other hand she of the uh, royal lineage of the divine mother so it, the, the name was quite an honor to to be given to me mm. and um, you know who am I I hope that I am that what is your life's purpose mm. My life's purpose is to be a channel, an emissary for the love force in all beings everywhere. Mm. And finally, what was your best day? Mm. I have received many initiations um, by my teachers and also by Divine Mother. And each one of those um, was a best day. And to me, in, in my experience, they just all combine into one. Well, very good. And well, we thank you for participating in this day with us here on Tell Me Your Story. And we hope to have you back again to to talk more about the work that you're doing and uh, how people can go about uh, this process of learning uh, this, uh, this uh, we'll call it uh, newly discovered Reiki method, Kali Ki Reiki, uh, as well as uh, participating in the Wisdom School at thewisdomschool.us. And thank you again. Mm. Thank you so much, Richard. And I thank you for listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. We are giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. And until our next broadcast, podcast, videocast, love to Lal, Jeanette, I am listening, and Dad, be happy. <laughs>